So this morning, I'm in the middle of a long anaerobic threshold interval on my Peloton when out of the blue and for the first time in almost two years of owning my bike, the tablet crashes and I have to reboot. I know that I've still got about two minutes left on that interval, so I keep cranking away at the same pace and resistance while I reboot. And believe me, I would have been cursing up a blue streak about my first world problem had I had the spare breath to do so. The screen reboots and I log back into the ride, still playing and with just 30 seconds or so before the next recovery break. My output was still right in the middle of my target zone, and as I finished the ride, I was feeling mighty proud of my resilience. And as I got off the bike and the oxygen started returning to my brain, I was struck by a little realization. That kind of grit is great for my 5 a.m. workouts, but when it comes to leadership, too much resilience can be a dangerous thing. Welcome to the Kind Leadership Challenge, where every Monday morning I teach you how to heal your school or library in the next 10 minutes. I'm Dr. Sarah Clark, founder of the Kind Leadership Guild, where I use my PhD in higher ed leadership and nearly two decades of experience in academic libraries to advise a growing community of educational and library leaders who want to build a better world without burning out. Kind leaders make the tough decisions without becoming jerks. We plan effective systems that help us get the job done with less money and effort. And we've learned that once we stop controlling and start collaborating, any vision becomes possible. To be clear, kind leadership's pretty simple, but it's rarely easy. So if you're up for a challenge, stick around to learn how to create a legacy that will strengthen your community long after you're gone. Like most things in life, the dosage of resilience makes the poison. And the older I get, the more I notice that too much resilience can be toxic for a lot of educators who are trying to practice kind leadership. Whether their resilience comes from being part of an underrepresented identity, from serving a community that needs a great deal of support in order to succeed, or because they just want to accomplish big things with their careers. My resilience comes from my childhood as a late Gen Xer in the Bible Belt as a combination of life experience, and the messaging I got from well-meaning but imperfect boomer adults who taught me that I needed to be tough to succeed. So I became tough, or at least as tough as I could make myself. And success followed. The problem was, like clockwork, every few years, some resilience-proward sprint to a goal would culminate with a burnout leaving me to recover in an exhausted, depressed heat for weeks or even months. Sometimes I went overboard with the resilience because I thought my job was more important than it was, to the point I stressed myself out. Sometimes I would put others' needs before my own, to the point that my care and concern for them wore me down to a nub. And of course, sometimes I was just working too much and too hard for too long. But all three things led to the same result. I broke. More times than I'd like to admit. The silver lining, though, is that I've learned from pretty much every burnout I've experienced and have realized that there are basically three different ways that an excess of resilience can come back to bite a leader and that each one of these mistakes can be addressed by one of the three skills of kind leadership. The first way that an excess of resilience can lead to burnout is when you make the mistake of deciding that your work is a calling, not just a job. That raises the stakes, which in turn raises your stress to unsustainable levels. Yes, education has the capacity to create a better world, and becoming an educational leader empowers you to scale that impact. However, there is a fine and blurry line between working to improve the world and believing that you are required to save the world, whether or not you can sustainably do so. A few years ago, I ran across the concept of vocational awe, where cultural norms about helping professions, combined with a healthy desire to use your skills to do good, can cause people to slip into a belief that their self-worth is defined by their job and that taking care of the community they serve is more important than taking care of themselves. A 
A person with a lot of resilience can keep that up for a while by tuning out their emotions and the values they hold outside the professional realm. But eventually they'll go too far and will need to use the power of growing humanely to listen to all of their feelings and all of their values and make decisions that honor all of those values, confident in the knowledge that you can take care of yourself and your loved ones and still be a good enough person. Just as a resilient leader can run into trouble by stressing too much, another risk is trying to maintain an unsustainable workload or doing too much. Between podcasts, LinkedIn, and various live streams, I have probably racked up a half dozen rants at this point on the insanity of the do more with less philosophy. But those of us who have forged ourselves or who were forged by others into stronger stuff have a different and somewhat toxic definition of working hard. This is why you need to practice the kind leadership skill of managing effectively to take an honest look at your work situation and what does and does not matter about it and make plans to do the best job you sustainably can within the finite limits of your resources. And finally, I think a lot of us resilient leaders can fall into the trap of rescuing weaker or struggling colleagues. We should care about our colleagues, and where appropriate, we should coach our team members. But it is not our job to swoop in and save them from the consequences of their own actions or lack of actions. And that's where the third kind leadership skill of creating collaboratively comes in. Because when the whole team shares an equal sense of commitment and trust, then no one person or group gets stuck doing all the work. If you listened closely about these three dark sides of resilience and how you can avoid or address them, you may have noticed a common thread between all three solutions. Boundaries. Setting boundaries about how much you care about your work, about how much effort you put into your work, and about acceptable behavior from those with whom you work. Setting boundaries doesn't mean you're not resilient. It means that you're resilient enough to make sure that that strength serves you for many years to come. And that leads me to my challenge to all my fellow resilient educators out there. What boundary do you need to set this week? And how are you going to set it? Thanks as always for listening to the Kind Leadership Challenge and for growing humanely, managing effectively and creating collaboratively in your own organization. And if you know someone who might find this episode helpful, hit share in your podcast app or just send them over to kindleadershipchallenge.com slash 88. Never doubt that day by day, you're building a better world even if you can't see it yet. So until next time, stay kind now. Oh, one last thing. If you're ready to take on this week's challenge, but not sure how to start, head over to kindleadershipchallenge.com slash next to download the next steps checklist.